living, non-living. What your child will learn from this lesson is developing a sense of order in their world. They'll be able to classify their world. And finally, they'll, it'll help them to develop a natural curiosity about, about what's going on in their world. Things you will need for this work are your rug. And again, the purpose of the rug is to develop a workspace for them to work. And then you will also need a set of cards. You'll need two labeling cards, one that says living and one that says non-living. And then also you'll need a set of photographs. And these are from Miss Kelly's. She took these. And there are things, obviously, that are living, such as flowers, a dog, a cat. And then you'll want a set of cards of things that are not living, things like a chair, a vase, a beach ball. So you'll have a set of these cards, an equal amount, maybe three or four of each, living and non-living. You'll have them in a basket, sitting on the shelf. And for the initial presentation, we'll go something like this. Don't forget the tips for success when working with children. The first part is you'll watch the video and learn how to do the presentation. The second part is you will do the presentation or the lesson with your child. And then finally, your child will enjoy this lesson independently on their own. Our living and non-living presentation would go something like this. There are different characteristics for things that are living. A living thing grows, a living thing needs food, and a living thing can reproduce. Non-living things do not, need, do not follow any of those characteristics. So we'll show the child labels, living and non-living. And this is where the classification comes in. You'll pull out the pictures one at a time. A vase. Does a vase grow? Does a vase need food to survive? Does a vase reproduce? The answer to all those questions is no. So a vase would go in the non-living column. A dog. Does a dog grow? from a puppy to a dog. Does he need food and water to live? Absolutely. And do dogs reproduce? Yes, they have puppies. A dog is living. Flowers. Flowers grow. And the child will usually take it from here. Flowers grow. Do they need food and water? Well, they don't eat apples or they don't eat sandwiches. But what flowers need for survival is water and sunlight. That's their food. So you can, all these things spurn, create natural curiosity from your children. So flowers are living. A beach ball. Well, it doesn't need food or water for survival. It doesn't grow. So a beach ball is non-living. A hammock. It is a great place on a Sunday afternoon. Is it living or non-living? Does it need food? Does it grow? Well, it may stretch a little bit when we sit in it, but it's not actually growing. So a hammock is non-living. Here's a beautiful picture of a tree. Trees, as in flowers, need water and sunlight to grow. They can grow huge, and they reproduce with the seeds that they drop. So a tree is living and so on and so forth. You'll go through the cards. We have a car. Is it living or non-living? And you can talk about this will create all sorts of additional questions and curiosity that your children will have. And remember to be creative with these lessons. As you're working on it and you think of a new idea, just roll with it. One idea that we have used at times is the kids can go outside. They can take a basket and go outside. Let's go on a hunt and find things that are living and non-living. So they can fill their basket with a rock or a piece of wood or a flower and some grass. And then you can come back in and talk again about what's living and what's non-living. And that way they're finding real things that are living and non-living. Enjoy this MyWorks lesson.